Hello to all grade 10 physical science learners and welcome to our tutorial today where we will be discussing the classification of matter. Alright, so this is a, a revision task at first, or topic rather, at first, with the re where we revisit uh, the properties of matter. Alright, we know that matter consists of physical as well as chemical. Alright, there's two different states physical and chemical versions or states of matter. Now a definition of matter that we should already be familiar with is that matter is anything or any substance that occupies space and has mass and we know that mass is measured in kilograms. All right. To have a look at the physical properties of matter, physical properties of matters are those properties that can change without changing the chemical properties. For example, uh, if we have water, which is a liquid, and we boil that water, we change liquid into water vapor. However, water still remains H2O, no matter in what state it is, no matter if it is in uh, solid, uh, which is ice, or in liquid, or whether it's in uh, vapor or gas, right? Water, the chemical property of water has not changed. It is still H2O. Okay, so physical properties of matter can include melting points and boiling points. The smell, um, density, hardness, as well as color are all physical properties of matter, but they do not change the chemical properties of matter. In other words, the chemically, they still remain the same. If you look at chemical properties of matter now, um, these are the properties of matter that if changed, can change the chemical nature of the substance. So if you change the chemical um, nature of a specific substance, you can either develop a new substance, all right? So for example, if we have a, f uh, a flammable substance that ignites, all right, we have actually incurred a chemical reaction, all right? So, so and uh, one of the most, um, and that's a good example, but one of the, mo a better example to even explain is the example of uh, rust or corrosion. Okay, rust or corrosion, a rock eroding um, in the ocean after years and years and years of water smashing up against it, that is called corrosion, the rock will begin to get, um, let's use the word, less and less or thinner and thinner, it will start to wear away, meaning that obviously we have changed the chemical property of the rock itself, right? It's changing, it's getting less and less and less. If we look at the classification of matter, we should be familiar that matter comes in three different phases, solid, liquid, and gas, which I mentioned a little while ago in the beginning of this video, okay? Solid, liquid, and gas, okay? So that's revision. Here in grade 10, we do visit what is known as a pure substance. When we have a pure substance, what does that mean? It's a substance that's in the same composition throughout the uh, uh, um, throughout the phases of matter, throughout the three phases, it's the same composition. No matter what happens, it still remains the same throughout. And then we also deal with a uh, mixture. But just to explain this little arrow leading down over here, is that a pure substance, although it's the same composition throughout, can comprise of a single element or single compound. And we see we have in brackets there, H, um, not H2O, sorry, O2, which is a double bond oxygen, which is the oxygen that we breathe. We know we don't breathe in O, we breathe in O2, all right? Oxygen being a diatomic molecule, all right? Diatomic molecule, um, it cannot exist on its own. It needs to bond to a brother or a cousin or whatever you may call it. That's pure substance can either be a single element or a single compound. Now, what is an element? Element is the simplest type of pure substance. In other words, it consists of only one atom. That is an element. We also deal with a mixture. All right, a mixture meaning variable composition. In other words, there's more than one substance that is within this particular mixture. It's like a mixture is kind of intuitive. When you mix anything together, it's usually more than one substance coming together to form a new substance. Then we look at what is the atom. Atom is the smallest particle of an element that exists on its own. All right. 
uh, everything exists of atoms and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of atoms exist in our world and in our galaxy. The, we find these elements on the periodic table, all right? And all the elements on the periodic table do consist of atoms that make up a single element. And the elements on the periodic table are divided into three main categories, which is metals, metalloids, and non-metals. Now, in the class that I have before we put this video together, I had to do a research task on the periodic table and come up with, uh, or rather find out five metals, five metalloids, and five non-metals that do exist on the periodic table. This is good for you watching as well to go and research and go find that out for yourselves, right? As research does extend your learning. All right, the molecule, the molecule is um, also a term that we find uh, that exists within chemistry as it is an electrically neutral group of at least two non-metals held together by covalent chemical bonds. Now do not worry too much about covalent bonding just yet as we will get to that in a later section. But what is important to denote about a molecule is that we call the substance a molecule if it is a non-metal substance. All right. It is at least two non-metals. So on the periodic table, when you do your research and you find out non-metals, any two non-metals, at least any two non-metals bonding together um, is what is known as a molecule. We cannot describe a metal substance as a molecule. All right. A molecule is non-metal. A molecule can exist either as a single element or as a compound. H2O is a compounded molecule because it con it's, it consists of hydrogen and oxygen, number one, right? Put together, we get a molecule which is water. Water is a non-metal, all right? Or it can consist of a single element, all right, which is nitrogen. And a nitrogen being a diatomic molecule, such as H2O2 as well, it can't exist on their own. It's still a single element, right? It just needs uh, to exist as N2 and not as N. It's the only difference. Okay. So now we're going to have unpack this little word here, compound. Okay, we talked about a compound. A compound is a pure substance that's made of two or more elements. And it usually, con uh, it usually is associated with the metal group bonded to a non-metal. In this case, we have iron sulfide, iron being a metal and sulfur being a non-metal. Okay, now this compound is in a ratio of one is to one. All right, so th we would call that a constant ratio. Right, there's one of iron and one of sulfur. All right, we don't see any subscripts like we see above here. No subscripts here, as one is kind of intuitive. All right, we don't put the one there. A compound can also be broken. All right, now compound meaning it can be broken, meaning we can reverse the reaction as 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 well as we joined iron to sulfur. To make iron sulfide, we can separate iron from sulfur as well, doing a reverse reaction. Now we move on to the term that we saw in the beginning called mixtures. All right, all under the classification of matter or matter and classification. Mixtures, more defined, is a collection of more than one pure substance in no fixed proportion. Okay, these substances still keep their separate identities and their same properties. Components of a mixture can be separated by physical or mechanical methods. Okay, those words are used interchangeably there. If we take example of brine, brine is salt water, all right, and salt water would be the salt which is NaCl and water which is H2O. Now NaCl salt keeps its properties and keeps its identity no matter if it's mixed with water. It still keeps its property. Salt will always be salt. All right and water will always be water. Now obviously to separate salt from water we boil the water or we boil the salt water the water evaporates into uh, water vapor Right, which is the gas form of water and the salt gets left behind. How can we separate iron from sulfur or um, out of iron sulfide is we just use a magnet. 
All right, a magnet will attract all the iron in the substance to the uh, to the magnet would be attracted and the iron would be separated. All right, I'm not sure how accurate it could be depending on the strength of the magnet to get every single piece of iron out there, but it's still a method to uh, disjoin or to break or to separate iron from sulfur in iron sulfide. To dive deeper into mixtures, we get two mixtures. We get homogeneous and heterogeneous. We're going to deal with homogeneous first. Sorry, I lost my uh, train of thought there. We're going to deal with homogeneous first. And the definition for homogeneous mixtures is the mixture is the, in the same uniform appearance, composition, as well as phase. Okay. If we have the example of food coloring, and water. When you mix food coloring together with water, it's very hard to notice the food coloring substance except by the color. In other words, it's very hard to disjoin these two um, substances because it looks as if the water is just that color. In other words, it's still quite watery. Okay. Now, any substance that is mixed with water is called aqueous. So I put that as just a side note there for uh, the class at the time. Okay. So food coloring would almost mix completely with water and make it look as if, let's take the color if it's a green food coloring and you put it with water, it would make the water look completely green as if that was its natural substance or its natural look or natural appearance. We'd call that miscible. Miscible liquids are liquids that mix completely with water. They mix completely. With food coloring, there's n no substance left unmixed. It mixes absolutely completely with water. And the last mixture, of course, as I mentioned, was the heterogeneous mixture. This is visibly different. You can visibly see in the heterogeneous mixture the two different types of liquids that are mixed together. For example, oil and water. Now, oil never mixes with water. Oil floats, as, floats on top of water. Okay. We have two different types of heterogeneous mixtures. Um, oh, and sorry, uh, one term I missed out, although you can see it there, is that oil and water mixture is called immiscible as it does not mix completely with water. In fact, it doesn't mix with water almost at all. It just floats on top of water. That's why oil can still burn while it's in water. Well, we have the term suspension. Suspension is a heterogeneous mixture of solids and liquids. If we have sand, grains of sand, you try to mix that in water, you will stir till you are blue in the face as nothing will mix. And then lastly, we have an emulsion. An emulsion is a stable distribution of a liquid in another liquid. And oil and water is considered to also be a emulsion type of heterogeneous uh, mixture. And this is our first um, look at matter and classification. Stay tuned for the next video where we dive deeper into elements on the periodic table as well as well as for when we'll dive into some conductivity of the elements of the periodic table.